What is going on, my friends? My name's Corrupt, and today we are here breaking down for you Pack a Bobat at Town Hall 11. What we're going to be doing here first is going over base identification. We're going to break down this entire base for this strategy, and then on top of that, we're going to be looking at live attacks in between this video, so hopefully that this will help you guys really improve with this strategy. So the first thing is going to be understanding base identification. One of the biggest things is you really want to take a look at where the town hall is placed in relation to where the key defensive buildings are, which are going to be things like the Wizard Towers, the Multi Infernos, and the Eagle Artillery. So these are going to be the things that you are trying to look for. So the Eagle, the Multi Infernos, and the Wizard Towers are going to be extremely important to get. Now, of course, you don't want to try and get all of them unless, of course, they are readily available to you from your entry point. Other than that, you do need to work into the base to get them. So what we're going to be doing here is if we know that we want to get both multi-inferno towers down, what we need to do is we need to create that funnel. So what, this is our pathing for our wall wrecker. So what we want to do is we want to carve this area out from the base. So we want to clear this entire section. So we're going to clear that, and we also want to clear this as well. So this is all that we want to kind of get rid of. We want to get rid of this. We want to get rid of this. What that gives us now is easy pathing for our wall record to get in. And then on top of this, what could happen is we'll, we'll have the Pekka's bowlers and the warden move off onto one side while the queen and the wall wrecker go for the other multi-inferno. So there's a lot of different things that you need to think about, but that's a lot of value for your entire attack. So you just need to make sure though that you are capturing that funnel because that is what's extremely important. You're going to see that example right here using the Pekka's or some of the Pekka's. And of course, the king is a great way to establish the funnel. You can see from both sides that we're using Pekka's and we're using the king in order to create the funnel for the rest of our attack. This is very important because, again, you don't want your Pekka's to move on to the outside and neither do you want your bowlers. This is going to help funnel in your bowlers. Now, even though you may think, all right, placing them right here would mean that they they might go over to the wizard tower. So you definitely there's a, definitely some caution when sending in the bowlers, but you want to make sure that you are able to send everything into the base. So you need to wait on your you know, you need to wait on everything before you start sending your bowlers in. Now, you'll see from here is that we will be dropping in the rage spell just to make sure that everything's getting through, especially going right into the core where we're going to pop the warren ability. But on top of this, we are making sure that we're raging up everything. The heroes, the healers, the bowlers, and the pekkas. This is going to allow us to kind of get through this large section of DPS, whether that be with from the eagle shots or something like that. But our rage spell or the rage spell and of course the warden ability is protecting the healers as they move in and the healers are very important to this attack because mostly without them you're going to really struggle in keeping the pekkas and bowlers alive for the most part now this is where you'll see that we are going to be splitting both the wall wrecker and the queen with the rest of the attack going in this way so you will see how they will split. And it's a nice split at that. With the queen moving in, she's going to take care of the rest of, you know, what she can take care of. While the Pekka's and Bowlers, because of the enemy queen, will move on to the other side, which is a great thing for this attack. Now, of course, it may not happen to you, but it's still a really nice thing in order to get so much value. So in this example, he got a lot of value. So there's a lot of things that you can take away from this example. If you can't get the other multi inferno, that's fine. As long as you can get as much of the wizard towers down as many of the, uh, if you can get the eagle and at least one multi inferno, you'll be completely fine. Now, this is where we're going to be doing a bat wave. Batwave, to me, is more recommended than anything else, better than Batbomb, because you can really predict the placement or, you know, the pathing of your bats. So, one of the things that you want to really take a look from this is that we are going to be making sure that the bats can start overwhelming these defenses. As long as we keep them staying overwhelmed, we can easily allow ourselves to get 
from defense to defense and one shot every single one. Once they start one shotting each and every defense, it's very, very simple. Here, there's no more splash damage buildings, so it's only a cakewalk for the rest of these bats. One of the biggest thing that you do need to worry about, though, is if you are using a balloon near them, be very careful. There could be a tornado trap or there even could be a, or there could be a red air bomb there to basically target those bats and take them out. So you got to really think about that when you guys are using this strategy, but this gives you guys a really solid breakdown into this. So let's show you guys a live attack of this strategy. So we're going to be looking at this base design right here. So this is kind of what I'm planning on here. We're going to first start off by creating the funnel with an E-drag. And then on the opposite side, I'm going to go ahead and use the king. Then we'll also use a baby dragon here. Use a packer right there. Make sure that we're kind of creating the funnel. I'm going to drop in the wall wrecker here. The main reason is look at where all those wizard towers are. Huge value. So I'm going to drop these in. I'm going to drop in the Pekkas right behind. Um, I'm going to pop the king's ability. Drop in the bowlers. Drop in the healers as well. And it looks really good right now. So I'm going to rage everything up right here. They're going through the base really nicely. So they're definitely getting a really good one. I'm going to pop the warrant ability right here. Make sure that everything's going through. Sorry, I, I bumped it. So we're, it looks pretty good right now. It's looking really good. So I'm going to rage up into here. We have a bunch of packas in the base. This is looking quite good. So I just want to see where we want to go ahead and drop in. I think we're going to drop them in here. So just to make sure that they're going over to this wizard tower, I'm going to freeze that up right here. It's looking really good right now. Should be able to take care of that. We'll drop one other fr freeze right there. Looking really good. And drop another one right there just in case some of them do go over there. They do kind of split, but I think we might get it. Yeah, definitely looking really good. So there we go. We have got ourselves a triple using pack a bow bat. Took me a while. Had a couple failed ones, but here we go. We got it. <laughs> Not bad. It was definitely base identification. The biggest thing that you wanted to look at was where all the wizard towers were. They were all in the core of the base. So I just saw, hey, let's take advantage of it and let's get some pretty good loot at the same time as well. So let's take a look at, an, an, at another replay so you guys can see exactly how you guys can use this strategy. Now, after that live attack, we've got this base design right here. Now, there's a couple things I will mention. For instance, the use of a E-drag is also really good to establish a funnel. One of the biggest reasons to why is if you look at right here, there's a lot of chain value in that small area. So that's exactly what you need to try and take advantage of. If you see there's a lot of buildings touching or there's a lot of spaces where there's a one tile gap like here, then it's it would be very, very good for you guys to actively use that E-drag to get value from it as long as there is no air defenses in range of your e-drag other than that you have free reign to create a funnel for just 30 housing space with that e-drag so it's definitely very very important that you guys kind of understand that so you'll see the use of the e-drag here it's going to basically allow us to kind of carve something out usually most of the time people are going to use a balloon in front of it in order to sort of soak up any seeking air mines however right here there doesn't seem to be any partially because it probably wasn't a good area for a uh for a queen walk so it was definitely not worth putting there but definitely you want to make sure that you're using a cocoa loon in order to make sure and test for any of them but usually what you want to try and do is carve out that side of the base so notice how what we're doing is we carved this out with the e-drag we're carving this out with the king and a couple pekkas and now we have easy pathing right into the town hall or right over to the town hall. Now remember that this is not town hall 12, so you don't need to worry about getting the town hall, but you do need to worry about getting the multi-inferno and the eagle artillery as much as possible. You of course still want to take care of the enemy CC, and something that you may notice already from this one is the use of headhunters. Now this is not too bad, all you have to do is really drop a poison and you will be able to kill all of those headhunters. On top of that, you have the warren ability and you need to protect your heroes and of course everything else as you're entering into the base. This includes your wall wrecker. I forgot to mention that earlier on in the video. So it's definitely very important that you guys really try to make sure that you're doing that. 
Now, as you're sending everything in, you have multiple rage spells that you're going to be using with your P.E.K.K.A.s, your bowlers. This is going to get yourself right in. Now, you may lose a large chunk of your bowlers, and that's completely fine, because for the most part, the P.E.K.K.A.s are the most important part here. Since they, they basically destroy walls so quickly, it's definitely very easy for you to clear up an entire section of the base by just using the rage spells. Pekka's have a lot of health, you have the healers right behind, since they're mostly being protected by the warden ability earlier on, and then just having the bowlers and the Pekka's there, it really definitely helps getting through the base with the Pekka's. Now, notice on this example, we're not dropping the bats from the top side here. This is what we're trying to do. We What we're trying to do is actively create that funnel for the bats to get right over to the multi inferno that's what we're trying to do which is the reason why we're using a giant and a balloon up top that way we're able to take that out once we take down the wizard tower then we have free reign for our bats to take down the last splash building so it's just a matter of being patient like you see right here just waiting 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 until Boom, he can drop in the bats, drop in the free spells, and take down the last couple defenses on the outside. That is really all you need to know about this one in terms of this example here. Now, this one is a fairly good example and definitely a little bit of a weirder base, but it still gives you guys the opportunity to really learn. Be patient with your attack. So let's show you guys another live attack. This time, we're going to show the use of an ice golem here with our, uh, with our P.E.K.K.A. Bobat. So we've got this base design right here, and we're going to be jumping straight into it. Fairly similar to the last one, but we've got two ice golems in the CC, in the wall wrecker. So what we're going to be doing is we're just trying to create the funnel to get ourselves to go in the right direction. Hopefully the king, okay, the king doesn't move over there, but that's fine. I'm going to use a P.E.K.K.A. here. Wall wrecker is going to go right over to where I kind of want the entire attack to go. So I'm going to wait for that to open. Drop in the queen, drop in the warden. Then I'm going to send in three P.E.K.K.A.s, hold off a little bit, send in some bowlers, then the healers. Now I'm going to rage everything up, pop the king's ability. Everything is starting to move through. I'm going to pop the warden ability as everything st sort of gets into the core of the base. It's looking really good right now. I'm going to rage up the core as everything starts to kind of move in. It's looking really good right now. Taking down the Teslas, we're going to basically be guaranteed to take down the multi-inferno. Looking really good. And I'm going to go ahead and let's go ahead and start off this on the mortar instead because we do have some momentum over on the other side. So we don't have too much to worry about. We just got to make sure that we are using our bat spells and making sure that they're staying alive. It's looking really good. The only problem is th this entire uh, push here, the healers, could really cause these bats to kind of die down. I'm going to drop in the freeze right there. Drop in a second freeze because they will be moving over there. We'll drop in that third because they are going to split. And that is going to do it there, guys. Pretty simple stuff. Getting it done. Very, very easy. That's really how you guys can use this strategy. So if you guys did enjoy, if you guys did enjoy seeing me hit live, then definitely let me know in the comments below if you guys want to see more live attack videos. And I'll definitely try to bring them to you guys. Uh, I do have a couple of them planned out. So 100%, it's definitely going to be very good for you guys to kind of see how I attack with different strategies. But this was one of them. So hope you guys did enjoy. Remember to leave a like on the video, subscribe, and hit the notification bell so you guys don't miss anything. Also, don't forget to go ahead and feel free to join my community Discord server. Or if you guys are looking for a clan, then look for, a, or a, you know, if you're going to be participating in any league wars like CWL or MLCW, etc., then definitely join my community or join the any of the Discord servers of the clans that I cover within the game of Clash of Clans. Don't forget to follow me on Twitter, Trovo, Twitch, and on Instagram. So definitely remember you guys can follow me over there. I stream on Twitch and Trovo. So don't forget there, guys. Our next stream is later today at around 1.15 p.m. Pacific uh, Pacific Standard Time. So definitely make sure that you're not missing that. We got some more CWL Esports action. Other than that, though, guys, that is going to do it for the video. Hopefully you guys enjoyed, and I'll be seeing you guys next time. Corrupt, signing out.